That's your name inside uh, Discord? Okay. Let me take a look. Ah, uh, there you are. Okay. So you, if you go to hashtag rules in Discord and give it a thumbs up. Bartolon, I do. I do work with occasional player. He is, uh, he's also known as Professor Do. In fact, here he is right here. He's now, he's now live with me on stream. <laughs> okay, so let's do this. So let's, uh, let's model the chair. Um, I will do this in open voice format. So I'm talking a lot. This is for anyone just watching outside of class. This is day number two of a basic modeling class. I'm teaching modeling texturing for games. And we are modeling a lounge chair uh, today. So just like we did earlier, I am going to show off. So here are the panels. If I hit space bar, uh, we have the four panels. We have a top, front, side, and perspective. Uh, if I hit space bar on any of these, I can go to that uh, particular viewport. Uh, we're going to go back to our perspective for a moment. Now we're going to go into our front and we're going to import an image plane now. So we have a, jar, a chair that we uh, brought from Canvas. So I'm going to go to uh, here in the front view. I'm going to go to view, image plane, import image. Click on that. It will take me to a dialog box um, where I can choose the file that I downloaded. This one's called chair. Boom, open that up. You can see it pops up here in my uh, front view plane. It automatically has the uh, move tool uh, connected to it. So I can move that up, down. You can see it moves in all four viewports. You can't see it move up in the top down because it's moved up on Z. Uh, but up here in the perspective mode, if I move it back, you can see it move back in the side and top view. So I want this to be a little bit larger. So I'm gonna scale it up and then I'm gonna make sure it's centered. So purposefully I gave an image that has a, a perspective view because that makes it more difficult to model, right? And so this is, it makes your brain think a little bit more in 3D of what the spacing is, is going to be because it's not all out there for you. Typically when you model something, you want somebody to give you a front and a side view because then you can bring those image planes into the front and side view in Maya and it makes everything very straightforward. So to, on Monday when we do our next uh, speed model, I will be giving you a front and side view uh, of a character to model. So, but I'm going to put this about where I think the, uh, the chair legs would be um, about straight up and down. Actually, I'm just going to put it right there. Boom. And that is good enough for me. Center it about where I think the center of the chair would be. We're just eyeballing it. Like I say, it's a, it's a perspective view. So now we can go back into our perspective. That looks pretty good to me. Uh, one thing I had turned on, I'm going to turn off is uh, x-ray mode. I will tell you what that does in just a moment. It's just an extra tool to help me uh, see past the things I'm modeling with. So yesterday we did the snowman and we used the uh, spheres to scale and, and, and move to build a snowman. This one is essentially the same thing, only it's with uh, pieces of wood, which are essentially cubes. Um, <clears throat> so 80% of this model will just be moving cubes around, but then there are a few things that we are gonna do uh, in addition to that, that we'll, um, we'll have to do something more than just move, scale, and rotate. So we're going to click one of these uh, cubes. Oops, I turned x-ray back on, apparently. What did I do? Oh, weird. Oh, I had a light mode on. Okay. So we're going to turn x-ray off. Okay. Okay, so you can see uh, that's just a, a straight blocky cube. We're going to move this in. So this is pretty simple and straightforward. I want to turn this into the basically the size of a two by four. I'm going to use the front view as much as I can as a guide. Um, here it is in regular mode. This little uh, it looks like two pieces of paper, two pieces of paper stacked on top of each other is it's called X-ray mode. It essentially allows you to see through the objects a little bit so that I can see the reference image behind them and it just kind of makes it uh, easier to model something like this um, so I can see the reference image. So I'm gonna click on that piece of paper and as you can see, I can, it, it allows me to be a little bit transparent. So I'm going to scale this in to about the width of that two by four that this chair is made of and then I'm gonna go into perspective mode and just kind of guesstimate um, the thickness that I think it should be 
And I think to me that looks pretty close. So I'm just gonna go with that. And this is gonna be the front leg. Uh, the front leg is the easiest um, because it is the one right directly in front in the perspective mode. So I'm gonna assume it's the right size. Um, so I'm gonna base everything else I build just off of that. So I'll have the bottom touch the ground. This will be the front leg. And we're just gonna say that's A-OK. -okay. Um, I might move it slightly out, um, guesstimating the width of this chair. It's kind of where I think it is. I'm gonna move this just a little bit. I kind of think it's, we'll put it at about the center of the image. That's about where I think it is. So we're just gonna go with that. And then we're gonna build the back leg. So we're just gonna duplicate control D uh, duplicates that first cube and we'll just slide it back to about where we think it should be. Uh, we'll adjust that later. Uh, we're just gonna leave that for now and start building some of the rest of it. So control duplicate, uh, control D again, we'll duplicate that front leg and I'm just gonna rotate that up. So hit me, like we talked about yesterday, W uh, is your move tool, E is your rotate tool and R is your scale tool. I use the hotkeys because they save time going through it. Alternatively, if you look over here on the left, you can see I can click these tools over here, but that means I have to move my mouse over there. It takes a second and I just don't have those seconds to spare. So going into my rotate tool, here's another hotkey that is incredibly helpful. I actually didn't learn this until I'd been using Maya for several years and a student pointed this out. Um, but if you hold down J, hold down the J button while you're in rotate mode, and I grab my manipulator and rotate it, it rotates it, it snaps it to 15 degree angles, which is just awesome because it makes it, I can snap it a couple times and it goes straight to uh, 90 degrees perfectly. And then I can scale this and make this flat top piece um, that will be the uh, armrest of my chair. And I'm gonna slide that back a little bit. Looks like it overhangs. Uh, we'll adjust this again later, but we'll just say that that is pretty good for now. Okay, so we're gonna take this front leg. I'm gonna make this uh, crossbar right here that these slats sit on. So I'm just gonna grab that front of the chair again. Control D duplicates. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna hit um, E to go to scale, and then I'm gonna hold down J again to snap that to 90 degrees like you do, and make that perfect. Okay, and then from here, from the side view, I can put it about exactly where I think the bottom lines up. This is about where the seat starts. And you can see that that overlaps just a little bit. I'm gonna scale it a smidge. So you can see right now, so thus far, we've only used um, the move, rotate, and scale tools. I haven't had to do anything else. Um, we're gonna go into some other tools that give us more control in just a little bit. Uh, but for now, I'm going to start laying out these, uh, <clears throat> these middle pieces. So I'm going to grab that center piece again. And holding down, it, going into rotate mode, holding down J again, I can stamp that to 90 degrees. Uh, this pivot point, um, because I've only used the scale tool, is perfectly centered. So what I want to do is snap this to my grid, to this zero, zero grid. And so... Up here in the top uh, right, you'll see all these little magnetic things. Do you guys see these up here? Uh, these are the snapping tools and they will snap to different things. So if I snap on this one that looks like a magnet in a grid, it snaps to grid. So if I click that on, you can see that this snaps to uh, each of these grid points. So I can actually center this perfectly um, to my grid by just grabbing the yellow manipulator and snapping it. And that just allows me to know that my, that little piece of wood is perfectly symmetrical. There's some other ways to do that, which I can show you later. And then I have to actually uh, unsnap that button to, do, to uh, make it stop uh, snapping to the grid. So if you notice everything is snapping uh, to where you don't want it to, look up at those little magnets and see if any of those are clicked on and you can fix that. If you also notice if I, hold, if I toggle X, you can see that little magnet lights up so if I hold down X, it'll actually snap those. So that's the hot key for snap to grid. And when I let go of X, it stops. So just another way to speed that process up.
So this one, um, I'm gonna look at see where I wanna line it up about to here. And with the, the help of my reference image, I can see about the width and the height, I mean the height that I want this thing to be. Uh, and I can make that line up pretty much exactly to that. And it looks like these pieces overlap this two by four just a little bit. So I'm gonna scale it to about there. That looks like about right to me. It's a little bit less, probably about there. And so that looks pretty good for my first piece. We'll just call that good. And so then I'm gonna make it the width that I think it should be, which is about yay. And then I'm gonna control D and duplicate those. Rotate those around to, and I'm eyeballing these ones to about where I think they should go. This one looked like it was uh, at about a 90 degree angle. I'm gonna hold down J, snap it perfectly in 90 degrees and scoot it up. So the third slat looked like in the reference image, you can see right here, almost came to the edge of that. So it kind of gives me an idea of where this whole thing should be, in my opinion. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the whole thing because it's uh, in perspective mode. So I can hold, uh, select one of these cubes, hold down shift and select the others and I can highlight them all at the same time. So it's called shift select and I can slide this down just a little bit, <clears throat> which I think is about right there. And it's okay that this one's clipping through. We'll fix it in just a little bit. And now, actually this one, sorry, I've, I've, got to, I've got to correct myself. This one clips in a little bit. And then this third one is a little bit shorter. We want to be accurate here. Don't want to, I don't want to cheat you guys. Okay, and then we're going to duplicate this one. And then this one kind of has the contour that then starts heading down. Move that down like you do. It's called ergonomic. So it just it's just comfy when you sit on it. Am I right? Am I right? I think I'm right. Could be wrong, but I think I'm right. Slide that down. Bring a couple of these over. All right. That kind of looks good enough to me. Tilt that one just a little bit. And we'll call it good. We'll call that pretty good. Okay, that looks uh, looks all right. We'll go with it. We're going to go with it, okay? And then there was a last one um, that kind of went on the back. Let's look at the image, though. So that one came about to where this chair goes which you can already see, I need to adjust this guy. So I'm just gonna slide it down so I can see. Do I need to do one more? I think I need to do another one. So it looks like it has a little bit of an S curve and then dips up. I think that's enough. Okay, we're gonna leave it like that. So I need, so this, uh, this two by four here is at an angle. So I need to adjust this. And I could rotate it like this, like that would be fine. Um, but that's not the way this is. It needs to have a flat surface up here. So I'm gonna introduce you guys into the components that make up a cube or any other object. And so this is something we didn't talk about yesterday, but this is important and I'll put it in the show notes, call them show notes, is, is any polygon object is made of essentially three different components. Faces, vertices, and edges. And it should all make perfect sense. So if you look, if we can go into those modes, if I right click uh, on the object, you'll see that I'll have uh, edges, vertices, and faces. We'll ignore all this stuff for in the vertex face, but these three are the import, important ones. Edges, vertices, and faces. So if we click on faces, you can see it goes into what we call face mode. And as you hover over any of the faces of the object, they highlight. And if I click on those, I can use my rotate scale and move tools on those just like you can on the entire object, but it only works on the components of that object. So if I have this face selected and I'm in move mode, I can actually just move that face component uh, backwards and forward. Uh, so I can select any of those faces. If I wanted to move the bottom of it, 
I could move that up and down. So conveniently, there's a couple ways, um, actually there's multiple ways I could move this in the way I want, want it to. Uh, so if I want it to move on that slant, I could just grab this top face right here and just slide it over until it's the angle I want it to be, uh, just like the image. And we could call it good. That would be just fine. Uh, some other ways I can do it, I'm gonna show you the other components was as well. So if I go into uh, edge mode, just like it says, the same thing. I can grab any of these edges on this object and I can now manipulate those objects, uh, that edge of that object. Changes it from a perfect cube into a different kind of uh, shape. I can scale that edge and I can rotate that edge, which does weird things if you rotate it too much. Um, so on the same note, I could grab all four of these edges up top if I hold down shift, I can grab all these edges and I can move that exactly like I could just grabbing the face component. So the next um, attribute of these objects is the vertices. If I go into vertice mode, these are the points where edges connect together. So typically um, there are three edges um, that connect to, make to, to, to one point or one vertice. Uh, it can have more uh, on end gons or at the top of a, a sphere, but typically it's, it's uh, two or three uh, edges that, that connect at one point. So I can grab any of those points as well and move those around. And likewise, I can marquee, I can drag across all four of those and I can do the exact same the way. So that's how I can uh, adjust this piece to that angle. Uh, in the image using either faces, edges, or vertices. I'm a big fan of vertice mode, so that's usually what I do. Um, I don't usually grab faces unless I'm extruding, but we'll talk about extrusions uh, probably in another time. I don't actually have to do any extrudes on this model, so we'll save that for next time. I try and do um, only show the tools that are required for each speed model, so we're building on top of that. Okay, so now that I've moved this into the angle I kind of need, I kind of feel like I need to move it back a little bit now um, to match where that reference image is, and that feels pretty good. Okay, so now we have this top piece right here. We're gonna move that down. Uh, so our, our chair is coming along. I think it's doing all right. I'm gonna move this one up just a tidge. Okay, <clears throat> so it's starting to form this, uh, this chair for us. Uh, one thing I noticed is these three pieces um, are a little bit larger, like the top ones. This just the small, the devil's in the details, right? So we're gonna add that, have that overlap just a little bit because it looks nice. Okay, uh, so what's next? So now we need to add um, this back piece back here. And I think I might just add that after we do the, the back slats. We're just calling them back slats. Uh, so I'm going to grab this top arm piece. I'm going to turn this into the, the, the back of the chair. So I'm going to select that, hit Control D. I can duplicate that. And I'm going to hold down X and snap it so it's centered to the grid. So I know my chair is symmetrical. And holding down J, I'm going to rotate it uh, 90 degrees so it's standing straight up. That'll make it easier for me to model it. And then looking in the front view... I'm gonna raise it up and make it at about the width that I think those are, those slats. And then I'm gonna scale it up to about the height that I think they should be. This is all entirely adjustable, so I'm not too stressed about it. And I noticed that, that there are um, seven slats total. So I could do this perfectly symmetrically, ugh, symmetrically perfect, make it perfect. Um, I'm not gonna worry about that today. We're just trying to do this fast and uh, um, we'll get into doing that later. So right now, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit Control D, move this off to the side to about where I think it should be. And then I'm just gonna select, Shift select both of them and Control D once more. Slide these three over to where they're about as perfect as I think they should be. Grab the, Shift select these three on the end, Control D and just slide those over to the other side and eyeball them uh, just approximately uh, as close as I think they should be. 
Okay, so now we have our seven slats, but we need to make this nice uh, arc that goes over. Uh, and then we need to have it taper in. The whole thing tapers and kind of fluffs out. So we're gonna go over how to do that really quickly. And we're gonna do that by adjusting them in vertice mode. So there's a couple ways I could do it. Um, one of the easy ways is I could actually grab, and I'm gonna go over both of them really quick just to show you guys. And then I'll show you my favorite way. It's kind of like I, I've, I've talked to you before. There are like several ways to do the exact same thing in Maya. And I don't want to go over every single one of them um, because then it's information overload. I want to show you just one or two of the ways you can learn those and, and do them. And then after you have you've understand those, we can show you more ways. Uh, but one of the things I can do is take all these separate objects and combine them into one object. So if I marquee over all of them, have them all selected, you can see in the outliner, they're all selected. And if we go to uh, modify, I think it is, or mesh, sorry, uh, mesh, combine, is that right? No, edit mesh. Sorry, I don't use these that much over on this side. Uh, merge, where's? Oh my gosh, I'm forgetting how to use Maya. They, they switch all this up. I'm totally going to edit this part out of the uh, YouTube video. Merges for welding. I know, I know, I'm so, I know. Uh, so confirm, mirror, transfer, clean up, edit, mesh, components. My brain, it's late. My brain is not working. Where's combine? <laughs> Reduce my poly count. Uh, I'm trying to combine my... Uh, my object merge transform flip but my brain's not working uh, i'm going to use the, the the oh there we go combine okay so we've just combined them all uh i had to do it in the uh i'm used to using the hot box so it's under mesh combine it was it was right there i knew it was so we've combined these we've merged these all into one solid object uh, so now if we go into vertice mode it makes it pretty easy to go back in and uh, just edit the vertices we want to. Yeah, mesh combine. Thanks, guys. That's why I have all the, uh, the people in here. So now we can, we can create this nice overarching shape pretty easily. Um, and then I'll show you the way I prefer to do it, just to keep everything separate as much as possible. Uh, but if we grab all the vertices, um, except for the outside two, we can just start to, to move these up. And then we just select these again, ignoring the outside ones again. And we can quickly make this uh, shape. Now, if we marquee over the entire bottom of it uh, and scale that in, we can taper it in and move the whole thing down. Yeah, so Mixel 1, I'm trying not, there's like, I, one of the things I just explained is there's like a thousand ways to do the same thing. So we could use the lattice, um, but, I'm, but this is a basic modeling class, so I'm, not, I'm trying not to introduce too many tools at one time. So uh, there's a couple ways we could rotate this, this uh, object now. Uh, to keep it simple, we could just keep the, the pivot centered and just rotate it and move it into position. and move it just like that right into position. Uh, the other thing we can do, and what I like to do, and we'll go over this tool later, is if you hold down D, you can move the pivot of your object. So I'm gonna hold down D and move this down to the base. And if I hold down D and V, remember how I said X snaps to the grid? If I hold down V, that'll snap to points. And I can snap that pivot. It's centered, but it's snapped to the base of this. And now I can rotate off of that pivot and rotate it at an angle. Boop, 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 boop. And it kind of acts like a hinge. And it gives me a lot more control because now I can put the base of this where I want it and then rotate it uh, perfectly to where I want it to be. Does that make sense to everybody?
Okay, so I'm going to show you the other way. So instead of merging and combining all these, I'm going to control Z out of this. Uh, like uh, one of our guests in the chat said, we could use a lattice. I'll teach you guys about the animation tools later, but we're going to ignore that for now. So I'm going to go to where these are not combined anymore. Uh, so we can avoid that. So these are all separate objects. So one of the things I like to do is keep everything as separate as possible uh, without merging. So I can actually marquee and highlight over all of these. And if I hit F8, it'll take me into uh, component mode of every object. So now I can move the vertices in every object without combining it at all. And I can do that exact same thing. and move those without ever merging it all together, um, just so I can skip that step entirely. So I can move these to where I want them. Oh, I almost feel like showing the lattice tool now. We're gonna do it later. Okay, but this does the exact same thing without merging them all together. And I can even, um, I can still select all these uh, together and, oops. And I can still um, hold down V and snap the uh, vertice down to the bottom. Oop, and I forgot one of them. Poor guy. He's mad at me. Hold down V, snap it, that pivot uniformly, holding all of them, and rotate those to the position I want. So not really a benefit to using anyone. You could do you could do any of those things. Okay. And just because I think it should be flared out a little bit more, I'm going to adjust this just a tidge. Okay, that feels pretty good to me. Okay, okay. So like I said, this will all be recorded. Um, except I get to edit out the stuff where I totally had a brain, uh, a brain issue and could not remember how to merge, merge a poly, oh my gosh, poly, merge an object. Or I should just leave it and, and show that nobody's perfect. Okay, so now let's do the same thing to, so the, the armrest on this chair has a nice little um, curve to it, as well as this nice little curve at the end. So I need to introduce you guys into another tool for this one. And the one I'm gonna introduce you to is uh, um, split edge. So I'm gonna go into edge mode, select this edge on the center here. And if I hold down uh, control, right click, uh, I can go to edge loop utilities and, <clears throat> oops, not edge loop utilities, um, where are you? Edge ring utilities to edge ring and split. And that'll just create a split right down the center. Bartolon said, doesn't help that the menus change around every couple of years. They do, and it drives me nuts. So yeah, so Bartolon's right. So, so the mesh, edit mesh, and mesh tools used to be all under the same category. And then even in the mesh display, they used to be in the UV category. They move everything around all the time, which is okay. So now that I've selected that edge ring and split it, uh, I'm gonna show you guys another hot key, hot key. If you hit the Y button, it'll redo the last thing you did. So now all I do have to do is select these edges and hit Y again, <laughs> except I think I did something else. Um, so we're gonna try that again. So I'm gonna go to edge ring utilities and edge ring and split, and then select that and hit Y. Oh wow, it's not working for me. It hates me now. Maybe I hit caps lock or something. Oh boy, anyway. Oh no, it's because I, Weird. Hold on. Something happened with you. What happened, buddy? That time it worked. Huh, strange. Weird things happen. Okay. So for any of you smart people in the chat, because I'm used to using the uh, hot boxes, um, edge ring should be a mesh tools, insert edge loop. Uh, where is, is G? Oh, why, why undoes the tool? You're right. Oh, Bartolon, what would I do without you? Okay. 
So control, right click, edge ring utilities, and to edge ring and split. Uh, that splits them perfectly down the center. Uh, the other tool I could use, and I'm gonna go over that. Um, if I highlight, if I double click on any of these rings, it act, uh, any of these edges, it goes down the ring and I can delete that edge. Uh, the other tool I could have used is the insert edge loop tool, which is right here under mesh tools, insert edge loop. And with this one, I can just drag on an edge. And when I let go, I can create those same edge loops, but I have to eyeball them to do that, which is fine on this project. But now, just like with the top of the chair, I can create that rounded look to it um, by going into vertice mode, selecting all the vertices, marking over them, except for the end two, and sliding those out. And then I'm gonna select just the center vertices, slide those out, and it's, a, it's low poly, but it, you create that nice curve right there. So it's starting to look like the chair we know and love. Uh, now I'm gonna insert another edge loop on this side. You can see I can drag it up and down wherever I want. And notice it's curved, um, just like the top. It kind of maintains that curve or whatever the shape is that tries to center it. Um, if I go into the, if I keep that ring selected and go into the scale tool, I can actually flatten it by scaling it down to zero. And that works. <clears throat> okay. Now I need to make this curve on the outside. I think there's another a number of ways to do it, but I'm just gonna do this the easiest way I know how. And it will also introduce you to the extrude tool or the append polygon tool, but we're just gonna teach you extrude. I'm gonna actually go into face mode and select all of these uh, faces on the outside and down below and just tap delete and I can just rid myself of them, right? So they're all gone but now I need to fill this hole that I've created. So like I say, there's a couple ways I could do this. I'm just gonna do this a simple way. I'm gonna select all these top edges. And if I go to Edit Mesh Extrude, and it gives me an extrude tool here, I'm actually able to extrude those edges down. If I hold down V, I can snap them to the bottom vertice, and you can see it's made that shape. Uh, the problem is, is I've taken two vertices and put them overlapped on top of each other, so they're not merged, they're not connected. Um, so to fix that, I'm gonna go into vertice mode. And I understand that a lot of this uh, may not be making sense to you right now, but it's good to introduce you to these concepts so that we can talk about them later. But I'm gonna merge all these vertices together. So if I go to, if I hold down shift, right click uh, under merge vertices, that will merge them all together. So now they're all the same vertices. So if I select one of them right now, they all move together. Uh, but what this allows me to do is just rudimentarily build that shape that we looked at. So I can move these pieces back and make that rounded shape to make it uniform. All right, we're speed modeling a chair, you guys. It's amazing. Okay. So what we've introduced you to, and we'll put this, this is all in the show notes. This is on Canvas on the top. So you can always look up these tools as well if you want to understand them better. So tools like how to merge vertices, uh, how to how to um, combine objects, how to merge them, faces, edges, and vertices, they're all on Canvas. Um, you can look those up and review them, how to um, split edges and insert edge loops. Because we're gonna do that again in just a second. Uh, but right now we have the back part of this chair. I'm just gonna grab the vertices and bring this piece over and grab this front leg to make this piece that goes behind the, uh, behind the chair. We'll rotate, scale this up, move it back where it goes, and then we'll rotate this so it's the same angle as this uh, backrest, at least approximately. It doesn't have to be perfect for a speed model. And we'll stick it on here like you do. Okay. 
So now we need a second piece, a little bar piece that goes behind the whole chair and puts it together. I'm just actually gonna duplicate this guy. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, I am. I am gonna do that actually. Okay. Scale them down. Move them back into position. So there's probably an easier way to do this. So this is how we shall do it. Okay, now I can just go into face mode and just drag it uh, back across and we'll match it up after we're done. Okay, because we're just doing this quick. Okay, so now we have most of the chair. So as you may notice, uh, we're missing the other side of the chair. So there's a, there's a few ways to do this as well, and I'm gonna go over a couple different ways. One of the easiest ways, we talked about groups uh, yesterday with the snowman, how we grouped all the objects together and they were able to move them together. So we want to mirror this side of the chair um, over to the other side. But actually, I just realized what we wanna do is fix these gaps first. Um, so I'm gonna use the insert edge loop tool again and kind of match them up with each corner of these slats. And I'm gonna add some edge loops so that we can change the shape of this two by four here. And then I am just going to marquee over the faces uh, that I wanna move up. And we can match this guy up to there. Move this piece in. All right. So roughly we have kind of that, the shape of that chair there. Okay, so now we wanna duplicate these edges. So we're gonna hold down shift and select all these components that we want to mirror over to the other side and I'm gonna hit control G. That puts them all under one container or one group. And now if I have that group selected, um, I can hit control D to duplicate that. And now there's a, a duplicate copy of it there. And if you look, um, this red arrow is scaling as the X direction. So we want to uh, scale this negative one on X, which will pop it in at the other side uh, symmetrically. You see this back of this chair matched up pretty well. We could make it fit a little better if we want to. Oops, hold on. Okay, there we have our chair. Okay, so I'm gonna hide my uh, reference image. So basically, this is what you could take a screenshot of. If you don't like this grid underneath, uh, if we go to show, you can see you have control to hide the visibility of every object in your scene. You can hide NURBS curves, NURBS surfaces, polygons. If I wanna hide polygons, I can click on that toggle and I can't see any polygons anymore. If I click that box back on, now I can see my chair. If I don't wanna see my grid anymore, that's cleared down towards the bottom. And if you ever run into an issue that you can't see your manipulators anymore, you can't see your move tools, uh, check in here. Maybe the uh, manipulators got turned off and now you can't see them anymore, which um, maybe you'd find a reason to do that. Turn it back on. All right, so there, there is the chair. So just like we did before, you can grab your snipping tool, make a copy of that. And there we have it, there we have it.